Okay, uh, Glenn, what we have now, the governor's office at Indianapolis has activated the Indiana National Guard, but only in six counties, and they are White, Warren, Clark, Washington, Jefferson, and Floyd County, uh, several of those counties being in southern Indiana. State police in Jackson County, Indiana, have identified uh, one of the victims from today's tornado, and uh, the victim is 84-year-old Nimi White of rural Cortland, and uh, she was killed when the mobile home where she lived alone was destroyed by a twister. Eight persons have been treated at Jackson County Hospital so far, and extensive damage has been reported in the western part of Jackson County, Indiana. Apparently we're not alone. Uh, Indiana and Kentucky, Georgia, has been hit with tornadoes this afternoon and evening, but so far there have been no deaths reported there. Also tornadoes in Tennessee, Illinois, and Ohio this afternoon, along with Kentucky and Indiana. Uh, I was taking calls for the last few minutes back in the newsroom, and I've talked to several people in parts of uh, Jefferson County. And what I've been able to determine is what Dick Gilbert told us earlier, that the damage begins in Jefferson County around Standerford Field. West of there, Shively and those areas, uh, there has been no damage. A lot of rain, there was some high winds, but very little damage. It's all uh, east of uh, Standerford Field in the path of the tornado. Also, uh, several people I talked to on the phone still are not clear when we talk about the critical situation of water. And I think we should repeat that uh, as much as possible. The, some of the women I talked to said, oh, I was going to go ahead and do the laundry tonight. So that shows you that the people are, are still not uh, uh, really uh, attuned to what this critical water situation is. The pumping station is out at Crescent Hill. Uh, we have only water supply for Metro Louisville. Uh, which would be in the reservoir at this time, and that's about eight hours. And we had that information an hour ago or more, so we can say probably less than eight hours of water is left at this time. And the city is asking anybody, industry and uh, residential users, businesses, to uh, curtail use of water tonight. If you don't have to use it, don't use it. If you've got a soft drink in the ice box, use that instead. Uh, and we may be able to make that eight hours of uh, water stretch for a full day, or at least until they can repair the damage at uh, the Crescent Hill pumping station, Byron. Chuck, an unusually s silent partner here. He's usually not silent. Uh, Jeff Douglas has been patiently standing by and handling much more of the broadcast than uh, we'd like to admit for us. I don't know how he us. can do it. He's so used to talking uh, at this time Jeff, of day. Jeff, uh, do you have something there? Seriously. I, I just wanted to add that according to Monica's report that we heard just a few moments ago, and Chuck, I'm not sure you heard that, uh, the officials are saying that uh, it will probably be for tonight only. It's a serious situation, but people shouldn't think that or get the idea into their head that they should perhaps hoard water because there's going to be a long-range uh, shortage of it. It isn't that way at all. It's just for tonight, so uh, just cool it with the water usage tonight and don't think that you, you might have to store any up because that right. isn't the case at all. Right. Uh, you people in the Louisville water system, it's a situation where we have the water, but uh, we have difficulty in pumping it maybe. Uh, we will remind you folks in the central Kentucky area that you are still under a tornado warning. It will be in effect until 745 for persons in Boyle, Jessamine, Fayette, Madison, Clark, and Bourbon counties in Kentucky. A funnel cloud was seen around Danville about 640 and was moving northeast at 50 miles an hour. If uh, threatening conditions are cited, of course, you'll move to a place of safety. And notify the nearest law enforcement agency or weather service. A tornado warning remaining in effect until 745 for persons in Boyle, Jessamine, Fayette, Madison, Clark, Bourbon counties in Kentucky. Now, in Frankfort, they are in the process now of mopping up after a storm that ripped through that city this afternoon. Exactly which part of the area was hit, we are not yet sure. Uh, Chuck, do you recall some of the conversation we had with Fred Welch, an eyewitness to the tornado as it came down the uh, Kentucky River? Well, he said an, an industrial park along the expressway was what he had seen hit. Uh, I think he mentioned a motel, probably. Uh, there was a motel along that way. And uh, you're probably more familiar with it than I am. The river in that area mm -hmm. is uh, the Kentucky River, correct? It's, it's very right. Uh, it's very strange how the tornadoes that have been reported today have seemed to follow the uh, the rivers. Up in uh, Indiana, the call we had from that area indicated that uh, the Blue River was the scene of a tornado in which it's the tornado flipped back and forth. Yes, it is. It was from Milltown in uh, 
It's on the edge of Harrison County mm-hmm. in southern Indiana. That was the first report we had had of any tornado activity. From there, it skipped over to DePaul, where it uh, damaged some mobile homes. And then, all of a sudden, in 30 minutes or so, the activity started in Jefferson County. Uh, Chuck, the Coast Guard Reserve uh, Louisville Port Security Unit is being called up and uh, should meet at the Civil Defense Unit on Sharon Avenue in St. Matthews. Again, Coast Guard Reserve Louisville Port Security Unit You are being called up and should meet at the Civil Defense Unit on Sharon Avenue in St. Matthews. For you Army National Guardsmen, uh, the point to convene with uh, the rest of the troops is at U.S. 42 in Pennington Lane. I hope by now you have gotten there and gotten away because that was earlier. U.S. 42 in Pennington Lane, that was uh, an alternate meeting spot because uh, the Armory out around the fairground somewhere uh, could not be reached apparently by road. We might mention, now that we're uh, on our nighttime coverage, which covers 44 states, that some people are probably waiting to hear the basketball game tonight. Right. And instead they're hearing us and wondering why. The Kentucky Colonels uh, game, the playoff game, has been postponed at this point indefinitely, is what I understand, uh, because of damage at Freedom Hall. Large pieces of the roof at Freedom Hall ripped off, Mm -hmm. uh, fell into the floor, the playing floor. Uh, it'll be some time before they can repair that or find somewhere else to play the playoff game. And at this point, as Van Vance reports from Sports 84, who knows when the game might be played. Might not even make it this well, week. Well, that's part of sports suspense. You know, Chuck, we didn't even get to the news uh, this afternoon, what we normally call the news, and we had a good uh, good day here. Uh, I was in the process of preparing a newscast, and so were you when the storm suddenly hit uh, All right, Jack Fox, thank you very much. A tornado warning is in effect until 8.15 tonight for persons in Jefferson, Bullitt, Oldham, Henry, Shelby, and Spencer counties in Kentucky. And I really hate to put this bulletin on. This means simply that a tornado warning, a new tornado warning, is in effect until 8.15 for us tonight in metropolitan Louisville. And this includes the counties of Jefferson, Bullitt, Oldham, Henry, Shelby, and Spencer counties in Kentucky. A pair of tornadoes were indicated by radar at 710, 15 miles south, and 10 miles southeast of Standiford Airport in Louisville. These tornadoes would be moving to the east-northeast at about 50 miles an hour. Now again, this is a tornado warning. This means that tornadoes have been sighted. And uh, it's from the National Weather Service in Louisville. A tornado warning is in effect until 8.15 tonight for persons in Jefferson, Bullitt, Oldham, Henry, Shelby, and Spencer counties in Kentucky. A pair of tornadoes were indicated by radar at 7.10, 15 miles south, and 10 miles southeast of Standiford Airport. The tornadoes would be moving to the east-northeast at about 50 miles per hour. Uh... I suppose that uh, you have already heard at one time or another the rules uh, for what to do when you see a tornado. Basically, they involve going to uh, the strongest part of the home or building that you're in, a place where hopefully debris couldn't fall on you. If you're outdoors, then a place where uh, debris couldn't blow into you. Now, repeating, a tornado warning is in effect again until 8.15 tonight for persons here in Jefferson, Bullitt, Oldham, Henry, Shelby, and Spencer counties in Kentucky. All right, Chuck Paddock, do you have something new? Did he get the- Dave Reeves is standing by the phone from the Weather Service. It's uh, been about three hours since we had this scene all over again. Uh, Dave, uh, can, what can you tell us about the latest tornado warning for Metro Louisville and Jefferson County? Well, we had uh, two uh, intense echoes on our radar uh, about... 10 miles south of Stanford Field here, moving eastward, uh, and another one on in Bullock County, and they were moving towards Shelby and Spencer, and so we put out a, a warning for uh, Jefferson, Bullock, Spencer, and Shelby, Henry, and Oldham. There has been one reported up in Pendleton County, and we put out a warning for four counties up there. This is all warnings up for the next hour, or the next 30 minutes, anyway. Can you tell anything about the intensity of the two tornadoes which would be moving into Jefferson County? Are they as intense as what we had three hours ago? There's no way to tell. Uh, uh, this one, I would say they aren't, because uh, they're in the uh, early stages. They're, they're not as large, but they're, they have the same shape that indicates they're quite severe. 
than they are developing at this point. Right. I mean, I can't. We're basing this warning on uh, the fact that things have occurred and the atmosphere hasn't changed any. It's still in the same state it was, uh, you know, two or three hours ago. And we're getting redevelopment of these thunderstorm cells, and they they're taking on the same characteristics. So we we have to put out you know warnings based on that. At the rate they're traveling, how soon would they be in the Metro Louisville area? Can you give us well, an estimate? I don't estimate? think this one is going to hit Metro Louisville. Matter of fact, I'm sure this one is, and this one is south of Standard for about 10 miles. You see, okay, it'll pass through Jefferson County. Well, extreme southern Jefferson County on into Shelby County. No, I don't. Uh, Metro Powhatan Louisville um, are the city limits. Well, the northern two-thirds of Jefferson County, I don't think, is affected by this this warning. Okay, it's strictly for southern Louisville and the counties east of here, right? Right, right. Okay, we'll check back with you uh, in a while and see what the progress is on those two tornado sites. That'd be fine. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Dave Reeves from the Weather Service. Byron? All right, uh, thank you, Chuck Paddock, and thank you, David. Uh, the gentleman who just came in, and I assume you've been outdoors, is uh, Robin Logston of WHAS. Robin, how much of the area have you seen, and what have you seen? I went out to Cherokee Park with my still camera to see what I could get out there. Cherokee Park uh, really looks bad uh, from the lookout point, if people are familiar with Cherokee Park. From lookout point, looking toward I-65, all the trees look as though they've just been wiped out. Uh, they've been topped or uprooted. That's really sad. It looks like it's been that, bombed. That was a beautiful area there. Yeah, it's not anymore. Did you uh, go through any other sections of the city, Robin? No, I really couldn't get around very well, to tell you the truth, so I just stayed out in that area and, and took photographs and uh, reacted pretty much the same way most of the people out there did. It's like a wake. It's very sad. What uh, Did you talk to any of the people who lost property? And no, uh, no, I didn't. I just, uh, I guess, not being a newsman, uh, just watching people and reacting myself. Uh, I talked to some co- county policemen who were in the same shape that most people in the automobiles were in. They were just touring that area and couldn't move very far. Another good reason why none of us uh, really who don't have to be uh, should try to get out tonight, I would assume. Uh, Glenn Baston has Louisville Gas and Electric on the line. Curtis Craig, uh, Kurt. I'm sure you have fantastic problems with the electricity, but I think the thing that is probably of more concern to all of us than anything else is what is going on at the water company. Could you brief us on that? Yes, uh, the reason they don't have water is because they don't have electricity. Uh, The tornado took down a 69 kV line into the water company. Trees on top of all of this. Uh, It isn't going to be easy, but they are giving this the top priority. Uh, this is the number one project that we have right now. Incidentally, we have about 700 people on a job right now, and it'll go on for, it looks like, several days. Well, what t- kind of time frame could you put on it, uh, Curtis, as far as getting this thing back in operation? Could you do you that? You the water company? Yes. Uh, we don't have a reading, we don't have know enough about it yet to give a timetable on the water company, but I will have to check back with you, but... We're making every effort. We know that it's most important, and it's taking. We're giving a top priority. All right. Now, give us some sort of idea of just what is affected electrical, uh, electrically wise, and have we had any problems with uh, gas service? Uh, there were reports of gas service leaks in Brandenburg, and it's my understanding we've cut off the gas to the town of Brandenburg to prevent problems there. Now, there are a few reports around. Of course, uh, there are a number of homes flattened. Uh, and there are indications that there's some gas escaping. But uh, the big damage, of course, is electric. How far or how widespread is that? Well, the uh, damage would run uh, from uh, Brandenburg, must be 44 miles uh, uh, downstream from Louisville, and it'll go on up into uh, through Jefferson County through Louisville and Jefferson County, so it would be pretty widespread. Curtis, as soon as you find out something on that uh, water company situation, uh, please let us know, will you? I will. Now, uh, you might check uh, with the water company people whether they have a break in addition to that, you know, some other problem. Right. Uh, But I do know that we're going to make every effort to clear up our end of it in a hurry. Fine. Thank you very much. Curtis Craig, Byron Crawford. Glenn, Kentucky Highway Commissioner James Gray has just called out road crews in eight counties. I would like for the county maintenance crews in the following counties and uh, uh, to report to the county maintenance garage, uh, the garages, Jefferson County, Bullitt County, Spencer County, Trimble County, Oldham County, 
Shelby County, Franklin County, and Henry County. I'd like for them to report to their uh, garages immediately and uh, be on a standby basis to receive calls from Frankfort, Kentucky. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. That was Kentucky Highway Commissioner James Gray calling out road crews in eight counties. Again, those counties are in Jefferson, Bullitt, Spencer, Trimble, Oldham, Shelby, Franklin, and Henry counties. You uh, road crews in those counties should go to the district garage and await further word from uh, headquarters in Frankfort. Frankfort has been hard hit, apparently, uh, at least part of the town, by a tornado that uh, followed down the Kentucky River late today. Brandenburg apparently is in uh, extreme difficulty, perhaps uh, gas service having been cut off to Brandenburg, as uh, Curtis Craig of LG&E just told us. I'll repeat this very quickly. A tornado warning is in effect until 8.15 tonight for persons in Jefferson, Bullitt, Oldham, Henry, Shelby, and Spencer counties. A pair of tornadoes were indicated by radar 10 minutes after 7, they were 15 miles south and 10 miles southeast of Stanford Airport at that time, at 7.10. The tornadoes would be moving to the east-northeast at 50 miles an hour. Glenn, do you have something new? I'm just getting a report on the phone, Byron, that uh, apparently the storm is about to move into the Highview section, the outer loop and uh, Old Shepherdsville Road, and we're told that uh, uh, the winds are beginning to pick up and it's getting very dark out there. Uh, so in that section, you might uh, might watch for another one of these heavy thunderstorms. Uh, may I point out again that uh, they have requested that you limit just about everything. Travel, don't use water, please. Uh, limit your use of the telephone. We might also uh, add to those officials who are attempting to get information out that uh, we are using the number that uh, Milton Metz normally uses for general communication here on WHAS. That is 585-2385. And uh, to those those of you who who uh, are not in an official capacity, uh, unless you have something specific to report to us, please do not tie up this number for us. Leave it open so that we can get communication from these officials. Bob Johnson, I was just talking, Glenn, with uh, an official from the fourth class city of Jefferson Town. They are the only city which has its own uh, independent waterworks, although they are dependent upon the Louisville Waterworks for their supply of water. And they say that uh, they are down to about a 15-hour supply in Jefferson Town, so that they ask people in Jefferson Town to use only that water that is necessary and not use any more. I have also been in contact with John Ramsey, the assistant superintendent of the county schools, and he says that there are three schools that have been badly damaged. Uh, he says the Chenoweth Elementary School, which is on Brownsboro Road, uh, just off Chenoweth Lane, was uh, heavily damaged. The new Dunn Elementary School in the east end of the county was totally destroyed. The Audubon Elementary School, which is in uh, the southern part of the community, south central, was also extensively damaged, 60 to 70 percent, he said. And so he said it, it is almost certain that the students who attend Dunn, Chenoweth, and Audubon Elementaries will not have school tomorrow. They are going to meet this evening to determine what will be done for the rest of this term. In addition, he said that Ballard and Wagner are open for those people who need emergency. We Show. have two schools open now. Ballard and Wagner. Ballard he and says Wagner. that... A third one. Uh, we only have one microphone operating okay. right now, Chuck. Uh, I have a third school, which is open. Highland <laughs> Junior High has been open to people for uh, That's housing. That's a city school. That's a, that's okay. a distinction. But yeah. Barrett is uh, too badly damaged, they're saying, to send people there. Um, Bob, go ahead if you've got something. No, that is it, just those two points. First of all, the, the lack of water in J the Jefferson Town area, which is a community-wide problem, but they say they're down to 15 hours' worth in Jefferson Town. We were told, uh, I, I've forgotten, Bob, maybe you recall our original information from the water company. Was it something like uh, eight hours citywide or something of that nature? Uh, we're not getting close enough to the microphone, right, Jeff? Uh, anyhow, we, we apparently had some problem out there. We talked to Curtis Craig just a few minutes ago, and uh, he tells us that he cannot put a time on when they're going to get this electrical problem cleared up right. out there. Uh, please folks conserve this water we don't know how they also ask that that you not uh, that you not hoard it that it's, it will create as much of a problem if you start filling your bathtubs and your uh, sinks with water as it will if if uh, uh, you use it excessively the idea is to leave it uh, where it is for as long as possible and this is what they ask have you had any indication bob uh, 
of, of anything going on around the state that uh, we may not be aware of. I know you've been spending a considerable amount of time in the heart of our operation back in the newsroom. Uh, the only thing that uh, I know is that this storm uh, system has uh, devastated uh, portions of Kentucky, uh, southern Ohio, and Indiana. That that uh, it is extremely widespread. We are more or less in the middle of it, and it would seem that most of the fatalities that have been reported thus far have been what we would say uh, 50 miles to the north and 50 miles to the south of Louisville. But there have been fatalities reported as far to the south as Bowling Green and as far to the north as uh, Lafayette, Indiana, which is a spread of about 500 miles or more. Oh, Bob and Glenn and Chuck, if I may interrupt, I have Monica Kaufman here on the line who uh, has a, an important update for us. Monica? Yes. Yes, I've got you on. Okay, I'm over at the Civil Defense Headquarters, and the county judge, Todd Hollenbeck, has just announced that a curfew begins starting now. This simply means that you folks who might be listening in the area should not, uh, above all, don't panic, but certainly try to locate a safe place like uh, a basement corner or... Um, uh, the strongest part of your home, and a point in the house where hopefully, or the building where you won't be hit by debris should the storm hit your area. Uh, Glenn, do you have something new? Well, I have a report on what has been happening over in Frankfurt from uh, uh, listener Don Van. Don, we our indications earlier was that Frankfurt has indeed been hard hit in some sections and that uh, they needed all the assistance they could get. Uh, what is your view? Yes, sir. The uh, eastern portion of the city uh, has been basically flattened. That's uh, in the jet area. Uh, we lost uh, service stations, several trailers overturned. There's roughly 17 people injured at this time. Uh, they're trying to dig out from under the uh, debris. They have the area cordoned off, uh, of course, so no one can get in. We were coming through. And uh, they stated that uh, they didn't know how many injuries they would have, but uh, we have uh, help from... Shelbyville, Shelby County, Franklin County, Woodford, uh, and a couple other areas, and with ambulances, and it's a steady stream to the hospital. Okay. Don, thank you for the call from Frankfurt. Yes, sir. That's what the uh, situation is like in Frankfurt, fellas. We're now at uh, about 23 minutes before 8 o'clock. I am told that all members of headquarters and headquarters battalion of the... Uh, uh, strike over on the type of the 5th Target Acquisition Division should report immediately to the armory at Mutual. This from the Adjutant General in Frankfurt. Uh, please do so immediately. Okay, Glenn, uh, Byron Crawford is here, and he was going to talk a little bit more about the curfew. But uh, in all of this, talking about the curfew and the severe weather which is coming in, uh, we did have the story a few minutes ago, and from our understanding, it is accurate. At least three dead so far in the Louisville area, 14 dead across the state of Kentucky from tornadoes uh, this afternoon so far. Two of the dead were taken to General Hospital. One of the deaths reported in the St. Matthews area. Byron? Chuck, as we move uh, closer to uh, perhaps some more storm activity in Jefferson County, we should repeat that a tornado warning is in effect until 8.15 for persons in Jefferson, Bullitt, Oldham, Henry, Shelby, and Spencer counties in Kentucky, two tornadoes were sighted by radar 15 miles south and 10 miles southeast of Stanford Airport a, a little after 7 o'clock. They were moving to the east-northeast at 50 miles an hour. Again, to repeat, there is a curfew from 7.30, and it's already in effect for Louisville and Jefferson County, which means that if you don't have any business out on the streets of Louisville, uh, official business, then you shouldn't be on the streets. And uh, if you are and uh, the police uh, have reason to question you, there is at least a possibility that you could be arrested if you uh, have no business being out. And uh, believe me, it's to your good. Uh, apparently we've had uh, some calls about uh, something that was said about Hamburg, Indiana. Uh, <coughs> apparently the situation, there was a snafu somewhere. They uh, have not had serious weather in that in that area, so we should alert all the people who were concerned. Apparently something was said. So yes, uh, Jeff, these things are moving so erratically that uh, even the Weather Service, uh, as good a job as it's been doing, is having an extremely hard time pinpointing exactly where the uh, uh, strong cell activity is, and so sometimes they give uh, the nearest town that one would recognize. Now, I understand that we have a report now from a spokesman in Senator Marlowe Cook's office, and could we have that report at this time? Well, first of all, we immediately notified the 
White House and immediately got in touch with the Federal Disaster Assistance Administration of, of the HUD. Uh, Mr. Tom Dunn uh, notified us that he would proceed immediately to uh, garner together a team from Atlanta in the southern region to fly into Louisville either tonight or in the morning to make an analysis from Breckenridge County and Meade County and the Louisville area and the Jefferson County area so that a complete evaluation could be made in preparation for any action that's taken by the state administration so that we can move immediately to uh, get whatever assistance is within federal programs into the area as soon as possible. We have been in touch with uh, the mayor's office in Louisville, uh, with the county judge's office. We have talked to Judge Stennett in Breckenridge County, and we have been keeping in touch with all of the uh, uh, public officials in the area concerned, attempting to get an evaluation, and have been uh, on the uh, line with the emergency uh, preparedness office uh, even, uh, giving them an up-to-date evaluation of, of uh, the damage uh, uh, just as soon as we can get it here. We indicated a few minutes ago that was a spokesman from Senator Marlowe Cook's office. That was Senator Marlowe Cook himself saying that uh, he's been in touch with the White House, has asked for and uh, is expecting an emergency preparedness team to come to uh, this area, to Kentucky, to find out what can be done and to expedite matters in the wake of uh, the tornadoes that were suffered in the Breckenridge County areas, the Louisville area, and apparently the Frankfurt area. Now, <clears throat> we are still under a tornado warning in Jefferson County as well as in Bullitt County, Oldham, Henry, Shelby, and Spencer counties in Kentucky. Uh, Glenn Baston is speaking now with uh, Judge Todd Hollenbach's office. We'll try to update you on the weather situation as it stands right now from the Weather Service after Glenn uh, finishes his report. Well, City Hall seems to have been made headquarters for uh, coordinating all the activities in and around metropolitan Louisville, uh, particularly on the south side of the river. Uh, that is where the Civil Defense Office is located. And we are told that Judge Hollenbach is in a meeting at the moment. Uh, someone in the uh, mayor's office there at City Hall is attempting to locate the judge for us so that we can get uh, some sort of uh, detailed information on uh, uh, this curfew situation. We are told that there has been a curfew placed on Jefferson County. It will be in effect uh, throughout the night. We're trying to get Judge Holland back on the phone, and uh, as soon as possible, we'll get some detailed explanation from him. Uh, again, let us point out some of these do's and don'ts. They're mostly don'ts, I guess. Uh, don't use water unless it's absolutely necessary. We have uh, some difficulty at the water pumping station. They do not have electricity there, and uh, it's giving us all kinds of problems. So please don't use water unless you absolutely have to. If you are stuck somewhere in traffic or on one of our major highways, Please pull your vehicle off to the side of the road so that these emergency vehicles that must get through can do so. The telephones, uh, they're still having some difficulty with those because we have a considerable amount of people or a number of people uh, attempting to make calls to various locations. And this has jammed switchboards and jammed uh, equipment at the telephone company. So uh, please, unless that is absolutely necessary, do not make telephone calls. We will try to keep you briefed on uh, everything that's happening around the area. Uh, while we're waiting for someone to round up Judge Hollenbach for us, let's check again with Byron Crawford, who's uh, talking, I think, with the Weather Service now. Yes, uh, Glenn, we have uh, Dave Reeves, who who has been of immeasurable help to us this afternoon at the Weather Service. Uh, Dave? Yes. Uh, go ahead and get your information, <laughs> because okay. that's what we want. Uh, we were aware that we're under a tornado warning in uh, this county and surrounding counties. Now, what about those two tornadoes that were cited earlier? Okay. Uh, well, the two that uh, we were uh, watching when we put out this latest warning for Jeff southern Jefferson County, uh, one of these echoes is now about 25 miles uh, almost due east of Louisville. And one is about, uh, that's, that's in Shelby County. And the other one is now about uh, 35 to 37 miles northeast of, and when I say, I'm speaking from Standard Field and miles from Standard Field. So you're, those two echoes are now in, the, uh, uh, one's in uh, either Henry or Owen County and the other one's in Shelby County. So the threat to Louisville and Jefferson County at the present time is, uh, is uh, over. 
All right, but now what about the people in the the counties you mentioned, like Owen and Henry and Shelby counties? Well, the people in uh, uh, Spencer, Shelby, Henry, Franklin, and Owen county should uh, be on the alert. Maybe uh, even people in uh, uh, Henry and Owen county uh, take shelter uh, if they have any, and uh, people in the central and eastern part of Shelby County should be on the alert. Okay. We are, these are two very strong uh, uh, radar echoes, and uh, they, I'm sure it's a severe thunderstorm. It may not be kicking out a funnel at the present time. Meantime, uh, Dave, do you see anything else on the screen that would indicate problems for any of us uh, in the uh, uh, immediate area here? Not, not for the next, say, 30 minutes or so. Uh, we still have a cold front west of us that's in the extreme western part of Kentucky, and until this cold front moves through here sometime uh, uh, late tonight or in the morning, we're going to be subject to a thunderstorm. Um, we have the western two-thirds of the state of Kentucky under a tornado watch, and that's valid for another three hours. All right, Dave Reeves of the Weather Service, many thanks. Uh, right, and we'll be in touch with you later. Fine. Thank you. All right, Glenn. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but while you were talking with Dave Rees of the Weather Service, we got some information from Officer Renfro uh, telling us that there is about to be some difficulty, apparently, in the Oklahoma area, Robin. Uh, it appears that uh, uh, there is another storm headed that way, a funnel cloud. Phyllis Knight, what do you have there? Uh, just that a funnel cloud has been sighted on Preston uh, going north, which would be toward Audubon Park area. Okay, so this would uh, would indicate that those of you in that area should prepare to take cover. Now, if you don't have a basement, the thing we are told you should do is find what would appear to be the safest spot in your home. Uh, get by a wall, uh, an inside wall, uh, something of this nature. If... Uh, if you have a piece of heavy furniture, a heavy table, or something like that, uh, please get under this heavy table. But uh, those of you in that area, please take caution. Uh, we're told in the Oklahoma area there is uh, uh, apparently another storm headed our way. Unfortunately, another storm headed our way, in addition to all of those that we've had uh, throughout the day. I think we have some information from a uh, uh, Louisville police officer, Officer Renfro, that we'll be getting to in uh, just a moment. Uh, all right, Chuck. Why don't you do that, please? At this point, uh, we are, since we do have threatening conditions in Metro Louisville and much of the area, I'm going to go over the tornado safety rules, uh, which tell you what to do when you take cover and where to go. Uh, seek inside shelter, preferably in a tornado cellar, basement, or steel-framed or reinforced concrete building of substantial construction. Stay away from windows. In homes, the corner of the basement toward the southwest is usually the safest corner. People in houses without basements will receive some protection by taking cover under furniture, such as a table or against an inside wall. In office buildings, stand an interior hallway and uh, on a lower floor, if possible, or the basement. In factories, upon receiving the tornado warning, which we have in effect at this point, post a lookout. Workers should be uh, prepared to move to the safest section of the plant, the strongest section of the plant, when possible. Jeff Douglas, uh, do you have Officer Renfro ready to talk uh, about the storm, which is in the Oklahoma area? This is Officer Renson, Louisville Division of Police Public Information Office. All citizens in the area of Oklahoma and McNeely Lake area are advised to take immediate cover. Schools have been opened and available for those not having cover. We repeat again, persons in the Oklahoma and McNeely Lake area are requested to take cover immediately. Once again, we'll repeat some of the things you can do. If you're in an open area right now in that area and you see the tornado, move at right angles to the path of the tornado. If there's no time to escape from the high winds, lie down flat in the nearest depression in a ditch or a ravine. If you're in a house with a basement, go to the basement. Southwest corner is the best place to go. However, if you don't have a basement, then you'll receive some kind of protection by staying in an interior wall away from windows and underneath some kind of a heavy piece of furniture. Glenn? Joe Order is on the line. Uh, Joe is is a uh, media uh, spokesman down at City Hall and takes care of uh, the information that comes out of the mayor's office. And tonight is coordinating information coming out of civil defense headquarters as well. Joe, tell us something about this curfew. Uh, the county judge Todd Hollenbach and acting mayor Creighton Marchand announced at seven thirty tonight that there will be a curfew in effect 
now for the time being in the east end of Louisville. Of course, it may be ex the area uh, to be included may be extended as these new storms develop. But for now, the area is bounded on the north by Brownsboro Road, Grinstead Drive, and Eastern Parkway. On the south by Westport Road, Lexington Road, Trevilian Way, and the Watterson Expressway. This includes a fan area east of Freedom Hall. Uh, the county judge and the acting mayor have asked for all citizens throughout the rest of the city and county to voluntarily stay off the roads and stay indoors. In the affected area, this curfew will be enforced. There have been some difficulties uh, in, in previous hours with emergency medical vehicles having a tough time getting through clogged roadways. Uh, Vehicles from the city and county works departments are clearing the roads as quickly and effectively as they can, but in order to facilitate their work, we ask that everyone stay indoors and, and off the road. I seriously doubt that we do, Joe, but do we have any way to determine how many people are going to have to take advantage of these shelters that uh, Civil Defense has set up for the evening? No, we're just beginning to get trickling information in. The police have taken some people to those shelter areas, but they have been so busy transporting people that they really haven't had time to, to make counts. Uh, again, as I'm sure you've stressed before, there's a, a continuing serious situation with the water supply. Uh, water pressure is down, especially in the East End, and, and the county judge and the acting mayor have asked everyone, please, to conserve on water. What would well, what should one do, Joe, if he needs to uh, take advantage of these shelters? The most effective way to plug right into one of them is to call the Red Cross Information Center at 589-4450. The three main centers in the East End now are Highland Junior High, Wagner, and Ballard. It was earlier announced that Barrett would be a shelter center, but it was damaged in the storm and will not be. Okay, Gerardi, I'll let you get back and find out uh, what's developed while you've been with me on the phone. Okay, uh, thank, thank you. Much, you. Goodbye. Joe Artery from uh, Civil Defense Headquarters at City Hall. Uh, a couple of things lined up to, to bring you up to date on what's going on. First, let's go to Chuck Paddock. Glenn, in line with shelters where people can stay tonight, there is a church uh, in the Brownsboro Road area which is volunteering its space for people who want to come sleep there if their home has been damaged or destroyed. It's the Thomas Jefferson Unitarian Church. It will be open tonight at 4938 Old Brownsboro Road. And that's just south of Holiday Manor Shopping Center. They say if you're going to come there to sleep or to spend the night because your home was damaged or you can't get home for some reason. If you have, and this may sound strange at this point because of the, all the hustling around of things that people are doing, but if you have a sleeping bag, uh, you'd be wise to bring it with you so that you might have something to sleep in uh, there at the Thomas uh, Jefferson Unitarian Church. Now, the church will be open tonight at 4938 Old Brownsboro Road, south of Holiday Manor Shopping Center. And then, as Joe Artery said a few moments ago, you can get in touch with the Red Cross and there are three centers where you can go to uh, sleep uh, tonight or spend the night or get Red Cross help if you need it. Uh, apparently, we are going to have quite a few people who are out of their homes tonight. Uh, we've got large numbers of homes damaged. Uh, according to uh, reports we had earlier from Dick Gilbert, uh, there were at least 200 homes in the Indian Hills area, and this is Dick Gilbert's description, that had no second floor because of uh, the damage. And as we all know, bedrooms usually are on the second floor, so that leaves people with very little place to sleep if, uh, if their homes were in that uh, in that area. So call Red Cross, or you can go to Thomas Jefferson Unitarian Church on Old Brownsboro Road. Byron Crawford is on the phone now. Byron? Yes, Chuck, thank you. And uh, before we go into uh, the report from Frankfurt, which we're about to receive, we should remind everyone in Louisville that there is a curfew in effect. Unless you have business out on the streets of Louisville and Jefferson County, you should not be there. Um, there is also... Uh, a request that uh, persons in the Okalona vicinity, that general area of the county, should take uh, precautions because we do have a, a strong cell moving into that vicinity. Now on the line with me is Prudence Moore, who used to be one of us here at WHAS. Prudence is in Frankfurt now, and uh, Frankfurt apparently was hard hit by a storm uh, just after Louisville got uh, the tornadoes this afternoon. Prudence? Oh. Uh. I was going to call and tell you that downtown Frankfurt seemed like it was unheard other than seeing a few trees down, but now it looks like all the electricity is out in Frankfurt. Uh, 
the tornado or the twist or whatever it was seemed to follow the highway and go on the south side of the city from the west to the east. A lot of the homes in Frankfurt are built without basements, and a number of these homes have been demolished or moved off their foundation. There are trees down that are hampering the workers to try and get back to the people. People are awfully dazed. Um, the, the debris all over the place is just unbelievable. And lines are down, power lines are down. Uh, I, I know you all have another twister going through. I hope it doesn't come this way. I know everybody does. But well, apparently th those two strong systems which were indicated uh, whether they be severe thunderstorms or uh, tornadoes in the making are centered now in the Owen County areas, Owen and Henry County, and in Shelby County so persons in that area should possibly take cover. Prudence, what about any fatalities or serious injuries there? Do you know of any? In I, Frankfurt? Have, I have heard of some but as to whether they've been verified or not, I wouldn't know. We went down Evergreen Road and there was great big beautiful baptist church this is the road out in the country and this baptist church has been leveled um the there were people that were cut and hurt wandering around around in the street who said you know that they knew of you know two or three people that were dead but these were not you know policemen that would verify it we helped one man who was climbing out from some debris and took him to the hospital when we got to the hospital we discovered that Frankfurt does not have a big hospital. It's a very small hospital because we're a small community, and it's, it, it was just crowded beyond belief. Well, what is the situation there now? Do you have uh, adequate help in the city? Uh... The only comment that I can get from people is they say, you know, if you've got any heavy equipment or they need strong arms to saw the trees and get the trees cleared out of the way so that they can get back into these isolated subdivisions or housing developments that have been hit. Did you have warning before the storm hit? We seem to have plenty of warning, but like I said, so many of the homes in Frankfurt are built without basements. The people said they could just stand and watch. There was no place to go. Well, Prudence, uh, we'll be talking to you, I hope, uh, later on and possibly getting another update on exactly what the situation is. Is uh, Frankfurt, Brandenburg, Louisville, and Jefferson County Palmyra, Indiana, and several other points in the Kentucky and Indiana areas mop up and uh, pray that uh, they are not hit by another tornado. And they tell us at the Weather Service that uh, due to a cold front that's now centered in far western Kentucky, we may be under the threat of severe weather such as we've had this afternoon until the cold front moves through, and that could be tomorrow morning or very late tonight or even later tomorrow. Prudence Moore, thank you much for telling us what the situation is in Frankfurt, and we'll be talking to you later. Thank you, Byron. This Good is time. WHAS in Louisville. We, uh, for those of you who have <clears throat> joined us around the country on our clear channel signal, uh, Louisville and Kentuckiana was hit by very severe weather today. <clears throat> uh, not, of course, the most important thing, but a factor in terms of programming and what you probably expected to hear at this time, the Kentucky Colonels basketball game was canceled because of severe damage to a uh, place where the game was to be played, which is Freedom Hall here in Louisville. Our... Uh, Radio news team has been on the job here continuously uh, since uh, about a quarter of five. It's now eight o'clock in Louisville. We have uh, Glenn Baston and Chuck Paddock and Byron Crawford. Uh, gentlemen, uh, where are we? Flip up. Which gentleman do you want? Could I have the mic just for a second, Jeff? Uh, Another unfortunate report, and I am told now that we have five confirmed deaths at General Hospital within the metro Louisville area. Now, what this does to our toll area-wide, I don't know, but I think it will push it above 10. Uh, it pushes it up to 16 in, uh, in the state of Kentucky. Uh, this will make then 16 deaths in the state of Kentucky. The injuries are many, many, many. Uh, we expect the number to increase as the evening wears on. We have been told uh, by the acting mayor that there may be, uh, to his knowledge, as many as 150 injuries in the Louisville area alone. We have uh, one confirmed death in southern Indiana. Uh, the, the, name at the, the name of the town at the moment uh, slips my mind. But now we are up to 16 deaths across Kentucky. Uh, we have passed a dozen in the Hoosier State. 
May I reiterate to you, uh, please do not, unless you absolutely have to travel in the Metro Louisville area, there is a curfew for the eastern section of Louisville and for Jefferson County. It will remain in effect throughout the evening. Uh, This is the area that uh, uh, was hardest hit. Well, we're at 8 minutes, uh, we're at 8 o'clock exactly, and this is WHAS in Louisville, Kentucky. Chuck Paddock? Glenn, uh, I might repeat that until 8.15 this evening, a tornado warning is still in effect for Jefferson County, Bullitt County, Oldham County, Henry, Shelby, and Spencer Counties in Kentucky. A pair of tornadoes moving across uh, through southern uh, Jefferson County and into the eastern counties uh, east of here. Uh, we're not alone, as we were talking, uh, southern Indiana has been hard hit. Uh, There's a late report coming from Swayze, Indiana, where Swayze police say a tornado has touched down in that Grant County city, striking a mobile home park, causing what they termed numerous injuries. No other details available, but police say that they have sent out a call for ambulances. Swayze is located west of Gas City in Indiana in Grant County. Uh, To repeat, uh, and it probably is a good idea to recap some of the things that we haven't had a chance to mention lately. Uh, The damage started in Metro Louisville and then moved across east of us uh, about 425 this evening when I was on the phone with John Burke of the Weather Service at Standiford Field. And uh, John at the time was saying he sees some high winds. And then he said the winds are 50 miles an hour. And at that point, uh, John said, I'm getting out of here. And he did, because he could see the tornado activity at Stanford Field. And uh, from that point, where it touched down at Stanford Field, it it ripped a path uh, eastward uh, through the county, destroying uh, a lot of property, damaging a lot of property. Uh, We understand, as we heard a little while ago from uh, Robin Logsdon, that a great amount of damage done to Cherokee Park. And uh, there were some mobile homes damaged uh, around the airport near Stanford Field. Uh, in Indian Hills, probably one of the hardest hit sections, about 200 homes. We haven't received a final figure on that, but about 200 homes had uh, received strong damage. And uh, of course, in St. Matthews, one of the deaths occurred in the St. Matthews area. Uh, so far, we have five dead in Metro Louisville, 16 dead in the state of Kentucky, 11 dead that we know of in Indiana. Uh, And I think one thing we should point out for people who may not be familiar with the area, uh, the tornado touching down at Standiford Field, the first point of impact, is in southern Louisville. And because it touched down there and not before that, much of southwest Jefferson County, the Shively area, and uh, the county out there and western portions of Louisville escaped damage tonight. So they're probably... uh, operating as normal over there, but they shouldn't be because uh, there have been requests for people to stay off the streets so emergency vehicles can travel around. Um, Luckily, there was one point uh, this spring where we had, uh, or last spring, where we had some severe weather in uh, the southwest part of the county, and there are a lot of mobile home parks out there. It did not hit that part of the county this time, and uh, I guess we can be thankful for that because... uh, should it have gone through southwest Jefferson County, I can think of numerous mobile home parks there that might have been damaged. At this point, a tornado warning still in effect for Jefferson County, the southern portion of Jefferson County, Bullitt, Oldham, Henry, Shelby, and Spencer Counties. The Frankfurt situation, uh, we understand, is serious. They are asking for all heavy moving equipment as possible to come into the area. Uh, in the metro Louisville area, there are centers for you to uh, go to if... Uh, you need housing for the night. I might repeat those at this time. Uh, Barrett, the Barrett School was to be one of them, but it was too dam- heavily damaged to be used. So now they're sending people to Highland Junior High School, Wagner High School, and Ballard High School for the night. And along with that, uh, Thomas Jefferson Unitarian Church will be open tonight on Old Brownsboro Road, uh, south of Holiday Manor, uh, in the Holiday Manor Shopping Center there. Uh, and if you can get there and you need somewhere to stay for the night, you might go to uh, the Thomas Jefferson Unitarian Church, and if you have a sleeping bag, bring it with you. The situation on the water uh, at this point, and Jeff Douglas is rather familiar with this, uh, as I have, but I've been running in and out of here back to the newsroom to help us regroup. The situation is that we still have problems pumping water uh, in the city of Louisville. Uh, the reservoir over at Crescent Hill is... Uh, 
not activated because of electrical problems and because of damage from the high winds. Uh, earlier tonight they said we had about eight hours of um, water available. If we would conserve it, we could make that stretch longer. So we've been asking people in the city, they're urging people to conserve water tonight, if at all possible. Uh, some other notes which have just come in. Uh, the city hall at Lebanon Junction will take care of people who are stranded because of wind damage tonight. That's the city hall at Lebanon Junction. Byron Crawford has a, a tornado warning, and uh, Byron, let's get that on right away, and then we'll come back to some of these other announcements. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, apparently, the tornado activity has bypassed Jefferson County for the time being. However, this is a new tornado warning, and we certainly don't want to ignore the people out in the state of Kentucky and Indiana who might uh, further need the services tonight. Tornado warning is in effect until 9 p.m. tonight for persons in Owen, Grant, Pendleton, Bracken, Anderson, Franklin, Scott, Harrison, Robertson, Mason, Woodford, Fayette, Bourbon, Nicholas, Wayne, Pulaski, McCreary, Laurel, Clay, Whitley, Knox, and uh, Clay Counties in Kentucky. Uh, <clears throat> they didn't need to put that other Clay County in there because we had enough counties already, of course. Uh, we've got most of eastern Kentucky and much of uh, east-central Kentucky covered in this tornado warning in effect until 9 p.m., We'll be reviewing the counties again in the new tornado warning area, including Franklin County, which earlier tonight, as was Jefferson, was hit with a tornado and is now mopping up. Glenn Baston, do you have something? Well, we are getting questions about this curfew. To whom does it apply to where? Uh, where is it in effect? I have from Civil Defense Headquarters on the line now David Gittleman. David, it sounds like you have quite a bit of background noise there, but if you can hear me, will you please give us an explanation of this curfew? Yes, uh, I'm at Civil Defense Headquarters. There's a, you know, a wide path that went through the eastern part of the city and on into the eastern part of the county of, you know, of just devastation, like. Uh, and we have an absolute curfew in that area, and I'll give you the boundaries of it, till 6 o'clock in the morning. No one is permitted, you know, out on the streets there. The police are going to stop everyone except official personnel and official health personnel in that area. Uh, I hope you've got the word out that the well, police are on top of the <laughs> situation. There. We're trying our best, and of course, I'm sure there are national guardsmen there too, David. Yes, uh, but um, let's 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 uh, emphasize let that word. Abs the, it's absolutely absolutely everyone. right. Just you know, off of the streets, and uh, we ask. There's a voluntary curfew, if you want to put it that way, everywhere in Jefferson County, because we not only have that area that we need to work in, but we are trying to keep our you know roads open, and we have the national guard and the police and everyone else working towards keeping so that we can get emergency personnel and health equipment in and out of the area so that it's important for everyone to Jefferson County to stay home if they can. Uh, let me give you the boundaries of Please. that. Uh, on the, the area, as I say, goes through like Cherokee and Seneca Park and up into US 42 Brownsboro Road up by Rolling Fields. It is bounded on the north by Brownsboro Road, by US 42, by Grinstead Drive coming towards town and then by Eastern Parkway. And so that that's the boundary on the north, and everyone, everything south and east of there is in this absolute curfew. And the boundary then on the south side of that, I'm starting at the east end, is Westport Road, so that everything between Westport Road and Brownsboro Road, that's the curfew area. Then it continues on into town, that south boundary, Lexington Road, Seneca Park, on down through Trevilian Way, and then about a straight line down to Waterson Expressway. Uh, that's about it. Wow, that, uh, that, that is fairly exact. Again, you would like to have people uh, observe a voluntary curfew area-wide. Yes. Now, we have a problem of some people, you know, wandering in that area whose, whose homes may be devastated, and the police you know, are going to do everything that they can to get people to shelters, and they seem to be on top of doing that. But unless a person has a legitimate official excuse to be there, they're going to be arrested. Uh, they just 
do not belong in that area, and if they're in that area, get in a home and stay there until 6 o'clock in the morning. It doesn't matter if you've got a job that you should be at or something of that nature, no, or that uh, you think you should be at. We've discussed it and have uh, the possibility of maybe having to put a, you know, a curfew on through the whole county and everyone stay where they are at work, but we're not at that point as yet. The only absolute curfew is in that area I described that moves up along Eastern Parkway and up towards US 42. Uh, the rest of the county, we just plead, you know, stay at home so that the police and the National Guardsmen can get in and out. David, thank you. Uh, get back to your monitors and give us a briefing if anything new develops. Okay, sir. Well, David Gilliman, he is uh, holding holding down uh, one of the chairs down at Civil Defense Headquarters, and, of course, you could tell that there was quite a bit of activity going on there. We have been uh, asked to suggest to those nurses who are headed toward Bargetown Road and Eastern Parkway to go instead to Lexington Road and Grinstead Drive, the police station there. Those nurses that might be headed toward Bargetown Road and Eastern Parkway go instead to Lexington Road and Grinstead Drive, the police station. All public health employees... Uh, sanitarians, nurses, listen to news broadcast from WHAS for information and stand by for service. If you have not been contacted and you are a public health employee, uh, nurse or sanitarian, please listen to the broadcast as we continue with them for information and stand by for service uh, if you are needed. Byron, you uh, uh, use my microphone, if you will. Uh, you have something there in your hand. All right, good enough, Glenn. I just wish to uh, air this tornado warning again because it affects a large part of Kentucky uh, from Louisville on east. The tornado warning is in effect until 9 o'clock tonight for persons in these counties. And listen very carefully because there are many of them. Owen, Grant, Pendleton, Bracken, Anderson, Franklin, Scott County, Harrison, Robertson, Mason, up at Maysville, Woodford County, Fayette, Bourbon, Nicholas, Wayne, Pulaski, McCreary, Laurel, Whitley, Knox, and Clay Counties in Kentucky. At 7.50, tornadoes were indicated by radar in Owen, Anderson, and Wayne Counties, and they were moving northeast at about 60 miles an hour. And again, I'll repeat those counties under the tornado warning until 9 o'clock tonight. Owen, Grant, Pendleton, Bracken, Anderson, Franklin, Scott, Harrison, Robertson, Mason, Woodford, Fayette, Bourbon, Nicholas, Wayne, Pulaski, McQuarrie, Laurel, Whitley, Knox, and Clay Counties, all in Kentucky. And as I say, that encompasses most of Kentucky east of Louisville. <clears throat> Again, we'll emphasize that uh, you must be aware of the curfew in Louisville and Jefferson County. And although the strict curfew applies to the Eastern Parkway area, uh, it uh, generally affects us all because none of us who uh, doesn't have business uh, on the street of streets of Louisville and Jefferson County should be out tonight. And uh, there are indications that if you are found in one of the strict curfew areas, then uh, you face the possibility of being arrested if you have no official job. Chuck? Byron, as you know, at a time like this, rumors start to spread, and uh, we have uh, several things from the city police department. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, from the Louisville Police Department, these announcements for off-duty personnel, no officers that are report to work unless they are called in. There was not a mass call-up of the Louisville Police Department tonight. Now, Suburban Hospital is open, contrary to rumor. There have been rumors that Suburban Hospital is closed. It is open. And the police and civil defense, again, have imposed that curfew on Jefferson County. All people will remain off the streets until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And Battery B of the 2nd 138th Artillery National Guard Unit is to report to Elizabethtown National Guard Armory as soon as possible. All men from Battery B of the 2nd 138th Artillery National Guard Unit, Kentucky National Guard, to report to the Elizabethtown National Guard Armory. All members of the Coast Guard Reserve, 82130, are to report to 5401 Southside Drive, and uh, also, uh, Byron, you have some late information coming in. Yes, uh, we do, Chuck. Glenn, do you have something that should well, go before? I have uh, the Red Cross standing by, Byron, on the phone, Pat Stevens. Pat, would you give us an update uh, on the situation with Red Cross? What are you doing and uh, what needs to be done from your view? We have three shelters open, and the Ballard shelter is full, and we'd like to divert people now to the... Uh, 
Wagner High School. How many people would you think are at Ballard? Uh, we haven't had a report. We just heard that we were full and had, couldn't take an overflow right now. All right. Now, those who should or who would normally go to Ballard should instead go to Wagner? Right. All right. Please continue. You have... Uh, you have uh, reports from the other stations? We don't have any reports from the other stations yet. They've been uh, getting set up. The Wagner hadn't had anybody in there yet, but Ballard is full, and we're trying to get the people started over there. Okay. We have had uh, several requests requesting help from nurses and things of this nature. Uh, are you involved in this, Pat? Uh, our, we have a nursing uh, nursing director here who's sending people out to the uh, different high schools, and if the nurses do come in, they're being assigned in two medical units. Do you still need uh, volunteers? Well, I don't know how many nurses have been have been reported in so far. I'm not sure about the audience, but I can check, and, and we can know more later. Okay, fine. Pat, thank you again. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Do you know whether or not there will be a third or maybe a fourth shelter open up now that Ballard is full? Uh, there's Ballard, and uh, let's see. We have three shelters open. You have three. Ballard, Highland Wagner. Highland Junior High. Highland Junior High. Mm -hmm. But Ballard is now full. Ballard is now full. And Highland Junior High and Wagner are the next two. Okay. Thank you, Pat Stevens from uh, the Red Cross office here in Louisville. Byron. Well, Glenn, we continue to get uh, dismal reports as far as the toll goes uh, for life in today's tornadoes, which apparently were rather widespread. One person has been killed, at least 41 injured, in the Clark County community of Borden, Indiana. At least a dozen persons are dead and hundreds injured in Ohio. The latest figures show 10 persons died in Xenia, Ohio, northeast of Cincinnati. Two more were killed in Cincinnati itself. At least 225 injuries are reported in those two cities, Xenia and Cincinnati. In uh, Cincinnati, an Associated Press reporter at the scene says three square blocks of the Sailor Park section are gone, every house level. Sailor Park, of course, being almost directly across from the Covington community on the Kentucky side, so there's at least a possibility then that uh, there could have been some damage on the Kentucky side of the river right across from Sailor Park where three blocks were leveled, three square blocks in the Sailor Park section, gone, every house destroyed. Glenn, do you have more? Well, may I reiterate what we were told a few minutes ago about this curfew uh, in the area mentioned, and it is in eastern Jefferson County. It is an absolute curfew. Uh, the police are simply not going to permit people to be on the streets there, nor will uh, the National Guardsmen who are on duty. It is absolute. For the rest of the county... The curfew is uh, on a voluntary basis. They are asking you to stay at home. Uh, you are not ordered to do so, but you are not going to be permitted to enter into this uh, very hard-hit area, which includes part of uh, Shawnee Park. Eastern uh, Parkway. Or, or not Shawnee Park, I'm sorry, uh, of Seneca Park, uh, along the Eastern Parkway, over into Crescent Hill, on out Bronzeboro Road. Uh, those sections, they're just simply not going to let you in. Uh, we're getting calls saying, does this mean I can't go to work, or does this mean that I can't get in to talk to somebody there? And the way we understand it, absolutely, it means that. You cannot do it. It is an absolute curfew and will uh, remain in effect until the daylight hours of tomorrow. We're at 19 minutes past 8, and we're getting also some calls about what's going to happen tomorrow to my school or what's going to happen tomorrow to my work and things of this nature. Uh, WHAS Radio. We'll stay on the air tonight as long as it's necessary to trans transmit information to you. Uh, we'll be on the air, of course, all night, but we will maintain this desk as long as it uh, is necessary. We will begin tomorrow morning along about 5 or 5.30 with uh, the same type of informational service that we are trying now to provide so that if you have a question tomorrow morning, please uh, tune us in, and those officials who are concerned will be getting in touch with us to, uh, to give us updated information. All right, Glenn, thank you. Um, of course, at some point tonight, we will probably find it necessary to stop to uh, review what information we do have about uh, where you can go tomorrow and uh, how many of you will be able to get there, what kind of condition the roads are in, what kind of shape our water supply is in, again, to retouch on the water supply situation. This is not something that means there's a chance for diseases breaking out. It's nothing like that. It merely is a, a problem regarding the electrical supply to one of the city's main pumping stations for water in the Crescent Hill vicinity. 
which suffered a direct hit from the tornado this afternoon, and uh, LG&E has given the situation top priority in efforts to restore uh, at least a partial water supply to us. They tell us they have several hours of uh, water supply left, but uh, they don't think that they'll be pressed into any more harsh action than asking us to voluntarily conserve water if we uh, use our water scrupulously. Now, Glenn, uh, Frankfurt has been hard hit. Brandenburg, obviously, is very hard hit because they tell us at LG&E, Louisville Gas and Electric, that the gas service has been cut off to Brandenburg. This really means, uh, despite the absolute curfew in the area that's been hardest hit in Louisville and Jefferson County, that uh, uh, whether we are in an absolute curfew section or not, we should stay at home at all costs, if possible. We should uh, stay off the phone as much as possible. Uh, there's no need to call a next-door neighbor and say, what do you think of the situation? Uh, this is a time when if we act uh, properly, we may be able to help authorities get us out of a mess much more quickly. Uh, perhaps uh, four or five hours we can uh, resume uh, normal communications. Perhaps uh, in the morning there will be some good news as far as the water supply situation goes. And, of course, everything is being done on the state and national level that is humanly possible. Uh, Senator Marlowe Cook personally called this evening and told us that he's already been in communication with the White House. He's already talked to uh, persons in the areas that were hardest hit, and he uh, intends to have an emergency preparedness team from the White House in here as soon as possible to see what can be done and how quickly it can be done, and he wants to do as much as uh, possibly can be done. Now, we know that at least eight persons have died in Kentucky. We also know that probably there have been 150 at least and maybe more injured in Jefferson County, possibly as many as three dead in Jefferson County. Uh, Chuck Paddock now tells me there are at least five deaths reported in the Louisville area tonight and 16 across Kentucky. Uh, hopefully the toll will go no higher, but uh, we are still in the process of mopping up from the tornadoes that hit this afternoon. And we already have a tornado warning out, again, a new tornado warning for possibly as many as uh, 15 counties, generally running from uh, Grant County, which is between Louisville and Cincinnati, to Anderson County down at Lawrenceburg, uh, over at Lawrenceburg, in Franklin County, which was already hit by a tornado, Scott County, uh, McCreary County in extreme southern Kentucky, Laurel County in eastern Kentucky, Clay County, Knox County, Whitley County, Harrison, Pendleton, Bracken, all those counties under a tornado warning because two tornadoes were spotted in Anderson, Wayne County, uh, and they were moving northeast at 60 miles an hour around 8 o'clock tonight. So to be sure, the Weather Service has said you people in those counties are under a tornado warning. Uh, be on the lookout and take precautions even when they are uh, seemingly not necessary. Jeff, do you have something? Well, the, uh, I just wanted to recall the tornadoes were so widespread this afternoon, as you uh, have been reading, they went all the way up in, into the Midwest. And uh, like we reported earlier, and it's been somewhat lost in uh, the, all the busy news so far, we had those uh, tremors uh, a bit earlier uh, in the southern part of the county, I believe, which was uh, the direct result of, I believe you said, people shouldn't panic at this because it's over and it wasn't near mm -hmm. here, an earthquake, which was uh, in the Midwest, much, mm -hmm. much farther away. And uh, that is a very, very unusual situation, very, very intense weather and uh, felt in many, many states. I, I, for, I think the location you gave was uh, somewhere south of St. Louis. I believe were. it was southeast of St. Louis, mm -hmm. some 130 miles, Jeff. But I thought... Uh, one of the interesting aspects of it was that this quake, uh, which was centered there, apparently measured somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.5 on the Richter scale. Now, mm -hmm. whether the Richter scale only goes to 7 or whether it goes to 9, uh, I am not certain. But whichever is the top of the scale, then uh, it certainly was strong enough to cause some tremors here, and they were felt around a wide area from Galena, Indiana, all the way down to Jefferson County and then some. Uh, Glenn? I've got a bit of good news. Some of the electrical power is coming back on. Uh, the Strathmore area in the triangle between Bardstown Road, the Watterson, and uh, uh, 
uh, Taylorsville Road. They now have power restored. And for those areas, uh, uh, we just had a request to repeat the information that we have. We will try to reiterate it for those of you who have been without power and who have not been uh, able to listen in. Right now, I understand that, uh, and for those of you, we do have a curfew in effect for a portion of uh, eastern Jefferson County. Monica Kaufman is on the line right now with uh, some updated information on this from Civil Defense Headquarters. We'll switch over to Chuck Paddock's desk for uh, the report from Monica. Monica, what's the latest on the curfew at this point? It's been expanded, correct? Well, it's uh, still going from now, started at 7.30 until 6 a.m., and it's still in the boundaries as we gave earlier. Do you need those again? Yes. Could you repeat those for us? Sure. And then I understand that uh, there's been another request from the county judge, which you can bring up after that. Uh, Time now is 8.26 from WHAS Louisville. Uh, For people tuning in across the nation, we have 44 states that are probably listening to us wondering exactly what's going on. Uh, Louisville area has been struck by tornadoes. Southern Indiana struck by tornadoes. Central Kentucky struck by tornadoes, along with uh, portions around the Cincinnati area and central Indiana and Tennessee. And uh, we are attempting to get out as much information as we can at this point on... uh, that will help people who are uh, stranded tonight from their homes, uh, who may be without power, may be without, uh, in some cases, without water in some areas, uh, or uh, who may need some place to sleep tonight. Monica, do you have the information now? Yes, the curfew began at 7.30, and it will last until 6 a.m. The boundaries on the north of the area is Brownsboro Road, Grinstead Drive, Eastern Parkway. On the south, it's Westport Road, Lexington Road, Seneca Park, and Trevelyan Way, and the Expressway, and everything east of Freedom Hall. And what they mean by this curfew is everyone in this area should please stay in their house except for emergency medical care. And they're asking all other people to observe the curfew because work crews are having difficulty getting in to clean up. In other words, this this includes eastern Louisville. Yes. And how much of Jefferson County? They have not given us a percentage. You'd have to mark it off on a map, I'm sorry. But there's a large portion of Jefferson County. Yes, it is. Now, the newest thing we've gotten just a moment ago is that Newman Walker, superintendent of city schools, says city schools will be closed tomorrow. We are still waiting to hear from Superintendent Richard Van Hoos, but city kids have a free day. We've also been asked uh, by Judge Holland Back and Crate Marchand, who's representing uh, Mayor Harvey Sloan, who's out of town, that all companies in our area close down their third shift because they need the uh, extra water supply. So they said the companies don't have to do it, but they would please like for them to. One other thing, Louisville Gas and Electric says that uh, their transformer station, which is out at Crescent Hill, the pumping station has been totally destroyed, and crews are now working to get emergency pole lines to extend power to the pumping station, but they don't think it will be repaired at least for seven hours. Um, As far as hospitals are concerned, Our Lady of Peace Hospital so far is the only one in the Louisville area not with electrical power, but they are supposed to have emergency generating facilities to provide electricity uh, sometime soon. And the uh, county judge has also said that Suburban Hospital was earlier without power, but service to it has been restored. We have not as yet received a number of officially from here of the number of people who have been injured or killed. Uh, And they say that they can't make any estimate as to the number of homes that are without power or can they say to the amount of damage that's been done, put a numerical value on it. Okay, we've run over quite a bit of new material. Let's cover two things that are new. Uh, One about uh, third shifts and the other one about the city schools. Okay, so basically, again, city schools, they have a holiday tomorrow. And... um, They're still waiting to hear from Superintendent Richard Van Hoos. We've been told that he is going over one of these sites. Uh, He's out at Wagner High School, and they're hoping to get with him later on for the county schools. But as of right now, it's just the city schools that will be closed tomorrow. And then the second item is that they've asked all the companies in this area to close down their third shift because of the water supply. Okay, thank you, Monica. You're at Civil Defense Headquarters. Check back with us on this line anytime you have new information. Okay, Chuck, bye. Byron Crawford or Glenn Baston, whichever. I guess uh, I was elected by the flip of the switch there. Uh, May we point out, and if some of you are indeed just getting your power back and just joining us, we have uh, 
uh, a very serious situation with our water supply in the metro Louisville area. The pumping station at Crescent Hill uh, had a considerable amount of problem with it because of the storm. The electricity to that area was knocked out. Now, we have a limited supply of water, so you're going to have to take care of it. Be very uh, conservative in your use of water. Uh, I had a call a while ago that indicated that we were getting uh, uh, a lot of laundromats and things like this, people passing by and seeing them still in operation. Uh, Please, folks, don't do this. If you're traveling, you shouldn't be in the metro area. The curfew, I'm told that there may be some confusion. Uh, That curfew for that particular part of eastern Jefferson County that Monica mentioned is absolute. You're not going to be permitted into that area. For the rest of the county, it is a voluntary uh, curfew. That doesn't mean that you can't get out, but it means that the officials would much prefer that you don't get out. In addition to Louisville schools being canceled tomorrow, Perry County, Indiana schools are also canceled for tomorrow. We do know that Brown and Williamson's third shift will not operate tonight. Uh, if those of you who uh, uh, lost power have food that needs to be refrigerated and uh, I know this is is in violation of what I just said about not traveling but if you um, have food that needs refrigeration I'm told that the St. Matthew's Ice House at Westport Road behind Bacon's has uh, opened and will permit storage there of food that uh, in which refrigeration is necessary Um, Byron may I pass it to you okay let me get my technician, Jeff Douglas, back on the uh, board here. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, we are beginning to get some information now from the LaGrange State Police Post. As you know, the heavy storm activity which moved through here and we thought was going to hit in the Okalona Outer Loop section missed us, apparently, and went up through Owen County in that vicinity, the Henry County area, and now we are getting some reports of damage from that storm. On uh, Highway 146 east of Crestwood, two houses and three barns either damaged or destroyed, and that will apply to all the uh, places I give you here. On Kentucky 53, a mile south of LaGrange, one house and a bank building under construction were damaged. Henry County, south of Campbellsburg, U.S. uh, 421, five houses and two barns damaged. Kentucky 1606 in Henry County, two houses and a barn destroyed. Pendleton and Henry County, one house trailer damaged, minor injuries. Northern Owen County, heavy property damage reported from Northern Owen County. And at Lacey in Henry County, one trailer and four barns destroyed and two barns damaged. We're beginning to get these kind of reports, and uh, what they indicate is that there's at least a possibility of some serious injuries and uh, possibly even deaths. And... Of course, as the evening wears on, we'll be giving you the toll as we uh, receive it here at WHAS. Here is a new tornado warning that is in effect until 9.15 tonight for persons in Metcalf, Green, Adair, Taylor, Marion, Casey, Washington, Mercer, Boyle, Lincoln, Jessamine, Garrett, Nelson, Spencer, Anderson, and Madison counties in Kentucky. Now, these are added to the list of counties that we gave you earlier, which made up many of the counties east of Louisville in Kentucky. These are all new counties, by the way, and they are under a tornado warning until 9.15 this evening. They are for persons in Metcalf, Green, Adair, Taylor, Marion, Casey, Washington, Mercer, Boyle, Lincoln, Jessamine, Garrett, Nelson, Spencer, Anderson, and Madison counties in Kentucky. From the National Weather Service is uh, again on the line. John? Yes, Glenn. What can uh, what can you tell us uh, now? I've got a little good news for us. I, well, it looks like uh, good news and bad news, as they say. It looks like pretty well west of I-65. Things are shaping up, clearing out, but we still have problems east of I-65. I think that reference point is probably a pretty good one, and things are still... Uh, working pretty good over to the east of us. There's uh, some activity. Uh, uh, now well, we just had a new warning issued, I think. Uh, Byron Crawford was just repeating that as you called in. Yeah. For areas down to the south and east of us, that's where it is. So the bulk of the activity is to the south and east of us. I just wanted to pass along that uh, from present indications, there's not too much to the west of us, and so it looks like we can breathe a little freer here in the Jefferson County area for 
for the next few hours anyhow, but we'll get back to you. John, I had a call a few minutes ago uh, from a fellow in central Indiana, and they are apparently having some difficulty getting weather information in central Indiana. Do you have any indication uh, of what, uh, would it be about the same, those areas that are east of uh, I-65? Well, probably a little further east in Indiana. It looks like the uh, line of stuff is uh, staying to the east, and that would extend on to the northeast of Louisville also. That would confine the activity in Indiana pretty much to, well, like you say, east of I-65. seems to be where the activity is concentrated. West of that in Indiana also, I would think, we can breathe a bit freer. I hate to get over in Indiana because it's property that belongs to Indianapolis. And uh, we haven't seen anything uh, pass along lately on on the uh, wire, which you do include on that uh, the information for Indiana. So, uh, I was just talking, I was just talking to the judge, uh, the court down in Nelson County. You could see one right out his window, and the driver at state police just phoned in, and they see one out there, went up their driveway. So that that bears out the heavy activity to the east of us. But we're, we're getting no reports of any activity at all west of I-65 at the present time. What about the front? Does it look like it's moved in pretty close? Well, the front is still quite a ways to the west of us. It's down in West Kentucky. Normally in a situation like this, this heavy activity, severe activity is confined to an area well east of the front. The front finally comes through. It may break out a shower or something like that, but for the most part, when these things come through this way, the, the heavy activity is uh, uh, well, 50 to 100 miles east of the front and on eastward. And that's we're talking that squall line activity. So that's what we're getting now. That this uh, looks like the backside of this time being. But uh, I think we'll, we'll keep looking at it closely and get back to you in oh, 30 minutes or so. How about that? Fine, John. Thank you. Yes, sir. John Burke from the National Weather Service. And for those of you in eastern Kentucky, uh, we're going to be with Up until midnight, I understand, with information on the weather, as Glenn was about to say. And we'll go as long as necessary to keep uh, you posted about what's happening throughout the state of Kentucky. Bears repeating right now at this point that we have two tornado warnings in effect for two areas of Kentucky until 9 o'clock tonight, which is 23 minutes away from now, for persons in Owen, Grant, Pendleton, Bracken, Anderson, Franklin, Scott, Harrison, Robertson, Mason, Woodford, Fayette, Bourbon, Nicholas, Wayne, Pulaski, McCreary, Laurel, Whitley, Knox, and Clay Counties. A tornado warning in effect until 9 o'clock for those areas, and the newest tornado warning until 9.15 this evening for persons in the Kentucky counties of Metcalf, Green, Adair, Taylor, Marion, Casey, Washington, Mercer, Boyle, Lincoln, Jessamine, Garrett, and also Nelson, Spencer, and Anderson and Madison counties in Kentucky. If threatening conditions are cited, be prepared to move to a place of safety. That's a tornado warning for those areas until 9.15 tonight. Also, uh, along with city schools being closed tomorrow, we've just received word from Father Casper that all Catholic schools in Louisville and Jefferson County will be closed tomorrow. Still no word as to what will happen to the county public schools tomorrow, but at this point we do know Catholic schools in Louisville and Jefferson County will be closed. Public schools in Louisville will be closed. Also, it has been ahead, it has been suggested to us, and I think it would be appropriate to uh, uh, make a correction. We have been told at one point during the evening that we had five deaths in uh, uh, the immediate area around Louisville, the immediate metropolitan area. Fortunately, we are able to revise that downward. We are told now that uh, uh, the various agencies have confirmed only three deaths. So let's lower that uh, for the metropolitan Louisville area to three. For the area all across Kentucky, uh, we can drop it to 14 now. Uh, We don't have these deaths pinpointing exactly. We are told that there were a couple in the Elizabethtown area. Uh, As soon as it is possible for us to give you an exact location and, yes, an identification of the victims, we will do so. We have identification on some of the victims in in Indiana. Uh, So far, reported to us uh, from Borden, Indiana, the person killed there was 73-year-old Harvey Lee Peace. Killed at DePauw were uh, 48-year-old Joyce J. Lincoln. Two people were killed near Greensburg, Indiana. 50-year-old Miss Emma Fry of Seymour was killed in her automobile five miles southeast of Greensburg. 71-year-old Frank Duvelius was also killed in Greensburg. 85-year-old Nimi Waite was killed at Medora in Jackson County in Indiana. And there are two fatalities in the Chelsea, Indiana area, as yet there have not been identities on those. Okay, now continuing on, some of the other things that we have here, uh, and it 
begins to be a problem for people who have homes damaged or who have problems. And I'm going to just quickly repeat the areas which still are open for people if you need somewhere to sleep tonight. Wagner High School is still taking people. Highland Junior High School is still taking people who may need a place to sleep tonight. However, Ballard High School is already full. Thomas Jefferson Unitarian Church on Old Brownsboro Road, south of the Holiday Manor Shopping Center, is also taking people for the night. And we have one other. The Westbury Apartments on Linden Lane across from Camelot will take anyone needing shelter for the night. You should contact Maria Estelle, who is the manager there at the Westbury Apartments on Linden Lane across from Camelot. Glenn? Chuck, I think we have a report uh, that that we have taped uh, here somewhere. Uh, Jeff, if you could locate that for us, please, uh, a report from Elizabethtown by Ron Boone on uh, what happened down there. In the Elizabethtown, Hardin County area, there are two deaths. These are confirmed, but names are not being released pending notification of next of kin. An unconfirmed report says the two deaths are related from the same family, a family of eight. One of the deaths is a two-year-old child. The other death is uh, a gentleman, and state police are not releasing the names on the identity of these two people until next of kin are notified. And the family is so large as we understand that it's hard to track down all of the members of the family. There's been considerable property damage in the Elizabethtown area, the North City Limits area of Elizabethtown. This reporter was on the scene and saw one mobile home park completely flattened. Also across the street from the mobile home park on North Dixie, the Clayton Mobile Homes, a new business in Elizabethtown. Mobile homes literally turn end on end and upside down. The complete inventory of Clayton Mobile Homes wiped out in one fell swoop. Apparently, the tornado from various sightings in Hardin County came from the west and northwest and moved towards the east and southeast. It struck in the Colesburg and Tunnel Hill areas, and the two deaths were apparently in the Colesburg area of Hardin County. Once again, considerable property damage as well as two deaths in the Elizabethtown Hardin County area. This follows in the wake of a storm which destroyed a mobile home park Friday night at Plantation Park, which is only about an air mile from where the second destructive tornado struck down this afternoon. I'm Ron Boone reporting from Elizabethtown. I'm Chuck Paddock. This is WHAS Radio. It's now 17 minutes before 9. We're staying on the air with continuous news about the weather situation after tornadoes ripped through Indiana, Kentucky, the metro Louisville area, as you just heard, Elizabethtown, and now they're moving into eastern Kentucky. Uh, At this point, we should repeat two warnings in effect. Until 9 p.m., for persons in Owen, Grant, Pendleton, Bracken, Anderson, Franklin, Scott, Harrison, Robertson, Mason, Woodford, Fayette, that's the metro Lexington area, Bourbon, Nicholas, Wayne, Pulaski, McCreary, Laurel, Whitney, Knox, and Clay counties in Kentucky. Until 9 o'clock, you're under a tornado warning. The newest tornado warning, in effect until 9.15, a little over a half hour from now, for persons in the Kentucky counties of Metcalf, Green, Adair, Taylor, Marion, Casey, Washington, Mercer, Boyle, Lincoln, Jessamine, and Garrett, along with uh, Nelson, Spencer, Anderson, and Madison counties in Kentucky, a tornado warning for those areas until 9.15 this evening. Chuck, the, there is a, a little bit of confusion. We should point out again that that curfew, uh, people may think, well, I live there, I'm going home, or they may think, well, I work there, I'm going to work there. Uh, that's the, that's not an excuse. It's an absolute curfew in that area in the eastern section of the county. Right. And people uh, should understand that, and uh, they are, you know, that serious about it. I, I would tend to think, Jeff, that uh, unless they work at some type of an industry which would be uh, vital to uh, the city at this point in that eastern section of the, the county, or city as it may be, uh, that they won't have to go to work tonight because uh, uh, the judge, the county judge, and I understand city government has asked that anybody who... Uh, as a business in Jefferson County, the city of Louisville, and can possibly shut down for this third shift tonight, should do so. And I would 
you know, it's only logical that if there's a curfew for the eastern part of the county and eastern part of the city, that those businesses will not be open tonight. So there's no need to go to work in that area. And like you say, uh, a lot of people may think that, well, I live there, I'm going there, but they're going to be stopped by the police or the National Guard. A number of people have been stranded in the downtown area, have uh, made attempts to get home in the eastern section of the county and uh, have gotten so far and then realized that there's absolutely no way they can proceed. Save yourself the trouble and stay downtown. That is really all you can do. Don't attempt the trip and think that you can get by the curfew because you live there. At any rate, enough said. Okay, now the tremor that we felt earlier across Indiana and Kentucky about uh, oh six oh five six ten this evening, uh, as we confirmed earlier on the telephone, uh, and it's been confirmed now on the teletype, that a moderate earthquake was recorded today by the National Earthquake Information Service, the U.S. Geological Survey, at Boulder, Colorado. The quake occurred at 5.05 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, which would be 6 o'clock Louisville Time, 6.05, and was located in central Illinois. The magnitude was computed at 4.5 to 5 on the Richter scale. The quake was felt from Chicago to Nashville, and from St. Louis to Columbus. Now, this is the largest earthquake in the Midwest uh, since back in 1968 when they had one that registered 5.3 on the Richter scale. And as I said, it was located in Metro Louisville, and uh, we also uh, you know, felt it in this area. And now here's Byron Crawford. Chuck, I have some terribly grim news, uh, and we always hesitate to put uh, these figures on the air. But I've been in touch with authorities who uh, are probably as close to the Brandenburg situation as you can be without actually being in the town of Brandenburg. And uh, although the authorities caution me that they have not yet confirmed the figure, the unconfirmed figure of dead in Brandenburg is 22 persons. Uh, our newsroom had heard, uh, had been getting some bad reports from Brandenburg. Uh, some reports indicating that as many as 26 persons had been killed by the tornado this afternoon at Brandenburg. The uh, authorities with whom I spoke, uh, again, cautioned me that they have not yet confirmed these figures of 22 dead in Brandenburg, Kentucky, but they also said it'll probably be sometime tomorrow, uh, possibly early tomorrow morning, before they are positive uh, exactly how many persons have been killed at Brandenburg, apparently. And, uh, of course, if... if if that tr is true, if 22 persons were killed at Brandenburg, then that would certainly be the, the worst figure for a single city that we have had so far, and Brandenburg is not a large community. Again, to repeat, authorities who have been taking reports out of the tornado-stricken uh, city of Brandenburg, Kentucky, indicate that unconfirmed reports say 22 persons have been killed at Brandenburg. They are in the process now of trying to uh, sift out uh, fact from rumor and decide exactly how accurate that figure is. 22 is the unconfirmed report of those dead in Brandenburg. Chuck, uh, you have something new? Uh, well, Glenn has something here, I guess. Glenn? I don't know whether uh, you're going to decipher this or not by yourself, Chuck, but uh, the Red Cross is asking help in locating a 10-year-old boy. Uh, this youngster has blonde hair and blue eyes. His father's name is Leonard Curry. And if you have information about 10-year-old Fletcher Curry, please contact the family at 458-6069. What area might, be, might he be in? Do you know? I have only that information there, Chuck. Okay. All right. Um, a few moments ago, we ran down the identities of the dead in uh, southern Indiana and central Indiana. At this point, we have a list, an updated list from the Associated Press, of uh, the fatalities and the injured, but not all the identities, from Indiana. And uh, I'll attempt to go over those now at this point. In Jefferson County, Indiana, at Chelsea, two dead. At Jefferson County, Indiana, in Hanover, one dead. At Hamburg, in Franklin County, Indiana, two dead, seven injured. Cortland, in Jackson County, uh, one dead. Ohio County, one dead. Dearborn County, one dead, Switzerland County, one dead, Greensburg and Decatur County, one dead, Ripley County, one dead, Otterbein and Tippecanoe County of Indiana, one dead, four injured, Branchville and Perry County, one dead, one critically injured, DePaul and Harrison County across the river from Louisville, one dead, Rochester and Marshall County, two dead, Borden and Clark County, one dead, 41 injured, one critically. 
Here's a list of injuries from Hancock County, 27 admitted to the Hancock County Hospital. In Kennard, in Indiana, eight injuries. Parker, Indiana, six injuries. Bartholomew County, that's the Salem, Indiana area, or the Columbus, Indiana area, uh, six injured. And uh, checking back, uh, we might best repeat, uh, it never hurts to repeat these enough, I imagine, uh, the tornado warnings, which are now in effect uh, until 9 o'clock uh, this evening for Owen, Grant, Pendleton, Bracken, Anderson, Franklin, Scott, Harrison, Robertson, Mason, Woodford, Fayette, Bourbon, Nicholas, Wayne, Pulaski, McCreary, Laurel, Whitley, Knox, and Clay Counties in Kentucky until 9 o'clock, a tornado warning. And until 9.15 this evening, Metcalf, Green, Adair, Taylor, Marion, Casey, Washington, Mercer, Boyle, Lincoln, Jessamine, Garrett, Nelson, Spencer, Anderson, and Madison counties in Kentucky, a tornado warning until 9.15. Glenn Baston, you have some more information. Well, I have Civil Defense Headquarters in Frankfurt uh, on the line now. Mr. Arnett, uh, uh, you tell me that you can indeed confirm that tragedy in the Brandenburg area. Yes, the uh, tornado pretty much hit Brandenburg uh, full scale. We have a confirmed 23 casualties at Brandenburg. Uh, what time? Do you, do you have any uh, idea what time this all happened? Uh, was this prior to Louisville? Or? Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, say it again. I'm well, I'm, I'm just trying to, to get some idea of what actually happened down there. Uh, it was a tornado. Uh, what Did it sweep through a residential section, or do you have that information? And Okay, uh, we, they were right in the path of the tornado, and uh, it walked right through uh, town and just went on out the other side. It uh, happened to uh, hit the residential and business district, which, of course, uh, met it all the casualties. Was this late afternoon that this uh, occurred? I'm trying to look here at a, uh, at a report uh, when, it, uh, when it hit. I've got a uh, number here about 410 this afternoon. What else around the state have uh, you been able to, to uh, confirm to this point? Okay, we've had a, a number of casualties other than Brandenburg. We had uh, a couple in Elizabethtown, a couple in Frankfurt, and uh, I think three in Irvington at this present time. Well, when you add in the, the three that we have had here in Metropolitan Louisville, we're going to exceed, uh, at this point, 30 deaths around Kentucky. That's affirmative. Is there anything that uh, civil defense uh, uh, would like to request of, of those in uh, the Kentucky area? Well, those that uh, are listening to the radio at this present time, we, of course, want to clear all the outside areas. We have emergency vehicles on the way. Uh, if they're not there, they're pretty much going uh, down the streets trying to take care of all the uh, emergencies that have arisen. Uh, if you have no uh, official function, outside right at the present time. We request you stay indoors. Uh, of course, listen to the radio. Uh, and if anybody calls on assistance, I'm sure everybody is going to be cooperative in this uh, in this respect. Are you soliciting uh, volunteers? Not right at this present time. Most of the volunteer efforts will have to go into full scale uh, tomorrow around daybreak. I guess it's a rather difficult chore just to, to dig in and find the injured people at this point. That's affirmative. Uh, we've got National Guard alerted in, uh, in several areas at the present time. Uh, of course, the city police, uh, fire uh, department's rescue squads uh, are out searching right at the present time in, in the areas. There's going to be many uh, rural areas that uh, we cannot get to right at the present time, but uh, we hope to get to them as soon as possible. If there is anyone that is in need of assistance anywhere in the state, is there a central place they can go to uh, that they can telephone if possible? Or Yes, we, uh, we have this open here as a central point uh, for Kentucky, of course. It's in the basement of the Capitol. Uh, phone number here is 564-4796. If, uh, if, of course, if we can uh, give any assistance at all, uh, that's what we're here for. You're in the 502, excuse me, the 502 area code? Yes. 564-4796 for Civil Defense Headquarters in Frankfurt. Yes. Well, <clears throat> I thank you very much for that report. And uh, if you will check with us or we'll check with you throughout the evening, we would appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Civil Defense in Frankfurt and unfortunately giving us confirmation of uh, what is a terrible tragedy in the, in the Brandenburg area with 23 deaths confirmed there. Uh, they have added to that several from... 
other sections of Kentucky, and we now will exceed uh, more than 30 deaths from those storms which swept through the Kentucky area and in some cases into uh, Indiana. And as Chuck Paddock uh, listed for you moments ago, there have been uh, several numbers or several deaths throughout Indiana. Uh, we, of course, will we'll continue to try to get information on this. Uh, Yes, Glenn, meteorologist Dave Reeves at the Weather Service, who has uh, been with us uh, most of the afternoon and tonight. Uh, Dave, what is the situation now? At the present time, everything uh, in western Kentucky, uh, west of the Interstate 65, is uh, clear of thunderstorm activity, and we think the threat of other thunderstorm activity in that area is over for the evening. We do have a... uh, Severe thunderstorm warning in effect in northern Kentucky counties of Boone, Kenton, and Campbell. And uh, there's still some heavy thunderstorm activity uh, in general in the eastern half of the state. We heard from Dry Ridge State Police uh, about 20 minutes ago, and they were seeing a funnel uh, go by in front of their their station. Where was this, Dave? Dry Ridge. That's in Grant County. Right. So everything is now... It's active as in eastern part of the state, and uh, hopefully it'll be diminishing here in the next few hours. All right. Thank you, Dave Reeves. We appreciate it, and we'll be talking with you later on. All right, sir. This is WHAS, and time is about four minutes before 9 o'clock. Uh, Glenn Baston. I have, uh, excuse me, Curtis, I have Curtis Craig of LG&E on the phone, and we were chatting about some of the problems that uh, the, the electric company is having. Uh, let's go on the air, Curtis, and if you will, please give us an updated situation. All right. Uh, we've had uh, more numbers out in the past, but most of our uh, people that have been with the company a long time say that they can foresee longer hours and more work to restore service in this one than in anything they have ever seen. So it could possibly be one of the worst that we've ever had. What about that water company situation, Curtis? Uh, The pole lines serving the water company, so many poles were down that they cannot, don't have time to put those back up. But they picked out a shorter route for a temporary line. They're digging the holes now. The poles are on the way, the other materials, and that's the top priority of all the jobs. So we do have an optimistic uh, outlook at least for that. I I think so. We don't have a time schedule on it, but that's the number one project. Uh, are there any areas of the city or the county or in your service area that uh, are really uh, large in nature and without power? Uh, I'm not sure that I can pick an area. If, it, if we did pick one, it would be uh, in, in the east end of the vicinity of uh, Watterson Expressway and uh, Highway 71. Curtis, we're going to remain on the air here uh, all night if it's necessary. If you get updated information, we would sure appreciate your calling us back again. Well, we're going to be around here a lot of hours, so I'll call you back. Thank you much. Okay, uh, I have a note here from the police department. They are saying now use no water except for an emergency. No water except for an emergency in Metropolitan Louisville. Now, of course, there was an optimistic report there from Curtis Craig of Louisville Gas and Electric. Uh, his firm is, is responsible for getting the power back to the pumping station at Crescent Hill. They're working as fast as they can, but they still can't give us a time frame. So we've been without this now. Uh, what are we approaching? Uh, something like six hours, five and a half hours, uh, something of that nature. If uh, what they told us at the beginning is true, we could be getting very low. So please use no water except for emergencies. I have been given a new severe thunderstorm warning. This will remain in effect until 1030 Eastern Daylight Time for the northern Kentucky counties of Boone, Kenton, and Campbell. For those of you in Ohio, the counties of Hamilton and Clearmont. Again, repeating, we have a severe thunderstorm warning. It's in effect for northern Kentucky's counties of Boone, Kenton, and Campbell. The southwestern Ohio counties included in this severe thunderstorm watch, Hamilton and Clearmont. Radar indicating several thunderstorms over northern Kentucky that are moving to the northeast 40 to 50 miles per hour. There has been hail of one inch in diameter reported just to the southwest of Walton, Kentucky. If those of you in eastern Kentucky should cite severe weather, Please move to a place of safety as soon as possible. It might also be advisable for you to uh, seek out some shelter at this moment. Our reports continue to be revised as far as the deaths reported throughout Kentuckiana. I am now told that we have five dead in Louisville, that this has been again confirmed. uh, uh, They have found two other bodies. They, of course, tell us that they have confirmed 
a huge number of deaths in Brandenburg, Kentucky. Uh, we have uh, something on the phone line, Jeff. Glenn, you please pick this up. This is a uh, reporter from the Meade County Messenger in Brandenburg and uh, would like to uh, fill us in on All right. uh, what has uh, happened. Hello. Yes. This is WHAS. Yes, this is Jane Willis with the Meade County Messenger in Brandenburg. Yes, and I Jane. wondered if you all wanted any information. Please, about. we are on the air live now. Please give us all you have. Okay, it happened at right at 410. That is the time our clock stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, the downtown section where we live and work is in pretty much demolished. Three people were taken out dead mm -hmm. from the downtown area. There were a large number that were injured, whether seriously or not. You know, you, we heard these reports of people being taken out on doors. It was true. <laughs> That's what we had to carry them out on. Uh -huh. um, the, the 24 figure that has been given by the state policemen, they have set up a morgue at the high school. Um, one that we know was dead was Robert Dressel, who was a uh, councilman at Muldrow, a city councilman. And he was uh, killed in the downtown area. And he has been identified. Mm -hmm. um, there is at least one missing that we know of, that we know missing. Um, it's just terrible. Jane, our reports from uh, Civil Defense Headquarters used a figure, I think, 23. You are saying 24 plus one missing, is that correct? Uh, the state patrolman told me 24. And one of my friends said, we can't find this friend's mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, What about the, the physical uh, uh, property of the town? What happened to that? What, what has it done to Brandenburg? Uh, well, it's in shambles, an absolute shambles. Uh, we, were, we were fortunate. Our family is all safe. Our employees are all safe. Uh, my mother, well... She was tremendous. She she herded us into the, the basement, and we said, oh, we need the door open. She saved our building. She opened the door. And um, she doesn't remember it because she was knocked into the basement uh, stairway. And um, she saved us because if the building had fallen in, obviously we would have all been killed. Um, the building next to us, at least half of it has fallen off. Uh, several really old brick places, you know, with three courses of brick or just rubble. Um, what are the people doing, Jane? Uh, are, are they able to get out? Uh, have, have those buildings that were demolished been searched? Uh, yes, most of them were in the downtown area. This is where we were. This is where I was shortly after it happened for at least an hour. Um, we all, as soon as it was over, ran out and started hollering for our friends. Um, you know, <laughs> and and all of us were, were able to find out who was there. And everyone that should have been there was there, um, except in two buildings that were, we had, that they had to dig people out of, or say three buildings. Um, how long did the storm last? Was it something that just hit and uh, did the destruction and then immediately... Uh... Uh, yes, I would say it was over in five minutes. No more than that. Mm -hmm. well, in fact, I was, I was so... Uh, well, I just didn't think it was coming. I was going to go out and take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> uh, But it, it just didn't... It, it just came up on us. Uh -huh. There was, uh, uh, I quite honestly can't recall, but did, was there warning... Uh, uh, were you aware that uh, we had had tornado watches throughout the day? I was not aware of it because I wasn't. To, uh, I was. I was working on getting the paper out, and uh, that's kind of a noisy job, and you don't listen to too many other things, you know. Uh, while tell us again, please, if you will, Jane, uh, about the situation with uh, those bodies that they are finding. What are they doing? With they them? are taking them to the high school building. That would be the Meade County. That high would be the Meade County High School building. Uh, I don't know whether there is anybody answering the telephone there. I can give you the number if you want it. Well, uh, whether it's working, I, we're, we're lucky. One of our two lines is working. Uh -huh. um, the other one just 
is dead. Okay. Why don't I get those numbers from you after we leave? Okay, the, after we leave the air chain. Okay. Uh, you tell me that they have now one person identified. Uh, are there emergency vehicles, are, are they able to get into the community, into the town? Yes. Uh, we have several helicopters that are coming in. Um, apparently people, this is one nice thing about rural neighborhoods, you know, everybody has a chainsaw. Uh -huh. And the roads were cleared fairly quickly. Uh, there were several large trees that were blown over the roads. But the county um, and the state road uh, companies were able to get out and push trees, physically push them off the roads. Were there any fires, anything of that nature? Not that I know of. None have been reported to me. Mm -hmm. Well, Jane, fine. I thank you for calling very much, and don't go away. I'm going to give you to uh, another gentleman in our newsroom, Dave Kiefer, and let him get these uh, particular numbers from okay. you. Uh, thank you again for calling. Glenn, we have... Uh an emergency call here from Frankfurt for a drugstore. It's about as simple as that. Those people in Frankfurt uh, were, of course, hard hit today, and uh, they need drug supplies very badly, apparently, drug supplies of all types. If you are a druggist or if you have access to uh, uh, drugs of the type that would be needed to treat uh, emergency patients, then uh, you're requested to call the Frankfurt radio station, uh, which I imagine is also on the air like we are all night tonight, trying to uh, see to it that uh, Frankfurt gets put back together. The station's call letters are WFKY. The number is, uh, of course, uh, the area code uh, 502-875-1973. That's the number for the Frankfurt radio station. They need drug supplies very badly in Frankfurt. The number is area code 502-875-1973. The midnight shift at the Naval Ordnance is not to go to work tonight. The Anaconda Container and Package Foil Plant on Robards Lane will shut down with the 11 o'clock shift. All employees should check with radio and TV for the day shift. And the Highland Day Care Center located at 1415 Bargetown Road won't be open tomorrow. We can almost take it for granted that... Uh, most places of that nature uh, in the hard-hit areas won't be open tomorrow. Also, many of the industries in Louisville, all of the industries uh, that uh, would require a large amount of transportation of uh, employees and so forth, are asked to voluntarily curtail operations somewhat until we uh, get some type of handle on the situation and decide what can be done tomorrow when things are cleared up overnight. And uh, this is on a voluntary basis, but officials would certainly like for you to curtail operations so as to not necessitate undue travel and uh, use uh, the water, which uh, is running out to a point now because we only have a few hours' supply, and they are working like mad to uh, get the facilities at Crescent Hill, the pumping station there, put together again and... Uh, so we won't have too much of a water shortage tomorrow, hopefully. They tell us it could be uh, at least six or seven more hours before that uh, that takes place, the repairs are completed. Anyone who has uh, missing family in Borden, Indiana, should go to Borden High School to report missing or to find those missing. We had uh, been given indications that there was at least one death in Borden, Indiana, in Clark County, and that uh, another 41 persons were injured. Earlier tonight, we heard that 35 persons had been treated at Floyd uh, Clark County Memorial Hospital and that uh, seven had been admitted. Of course, uh, that just barely scratches the surface as to what the situation is in Indiana. Uh, we have uh, dozens probably killed or injured in Indiana, maybe scores injured. Uh, Xenia, Ohio, north of Cincinnati, was hard hit. It's been declared a disaster area by Governor John Gilligan. Uh, Cincinnati lost uh, two or three persons at last word, and uh, three square blocks down near the river in Sailor Park were totally leveled. And, of course, uh, probably the worst news we've heard all night has been from Brandenburg, Kentucky, where I gather we have had at least 24 persons uh, confirmed dead and possibly others missing there and countless injured. In Jefferson County, five persons reported dead, uh, a couple of hundred maybe being treated for their injuries or admitted to hospitals. And in Frankfurt, uh, uh, there are dead, and uh, they are not blessed with uh, many hospitals down there and uh, great hospital facilities. So 
the situation there could become critical, and that's why we ask you if you can help supply any drugs that would be needed in uh, hospital emergency rooms to contact authorities in Frankfurt. Glenn? We have just received information that Jefferson County Schools will be closed tomorrow. Philip Morris, third shift today, and all day tomorrow will be closed. The third shift at the American Soul and Tool will not report for work tonight. Now, there is a, a fantastic effort underway to clean up uh, these areas hard hit by this afternoon's storm in the metropolitan Louisville area. Scott Gregory is the works director for Jefferson County and is on the line now. Scott, what can you tell us about the uh, uh, situation? Uh, what we have done is we're working with, out of the civil defense room with the city works department, with the Metropolitan Parks Department, and with all these other agencies. We have all of our available crews, and, and that's every man that we can that is not sick or so, for some reason in the field right now, and we're not observing any jurisdictional lines. Our, our crews are in the city. Their crews are in the county. We have volunteers, particularly from the Associated General Contractors, sending equipment into the area to... Uh, do whatever is necessary to clear the roads, to try to put as much of the wreckage back out of the way, to help with uh, any rescue efforts that might be needed, uh, bringing spotlights into the area for night work, and uh, we've got as much equipment as we can get in. One of the biggest hindrances we're running into, and, and we just can't reiterate this enough, is people sightseeing. We can't get our equipment through. We've been blocked several places because of traffic jams, and we desperately need for people to get off the roads unless they have to be there. You do not then uh, need additional equipment and volunteers as uh, we Yes, we are taking, we are taking you... volunteers. Uh, any volunteers that can do manual work and operate any equipment or are willing to work hard, we'd like to have uh, report to the Adam District Police Station on Whipsmill Road where they'll be escorted into the area to do work, but we don't uh, we don't need sightseers. All right, the Adam District Police Station. That's right. Uh, are sightseers still causing a problem, Scott? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. There's uh, the traffic in some of these roads is is got it jammed to the point where we are uh, have been unable to, at times to move any of our equipment into this area. Well, folks, let us then reiterate, along with Mr. Gregory, the works director, please do not go out unless you are going to the Adam Station on Whips Mill Road of the uh, police department to uh, assist in this massive cleanup effort that they are organizing. Uh, Mr. Gregory, thank you much. Right, thank you. Bye.